So, what do you think? Very interesting, Clark. Interesting. I'm sure with a few modifications, this one could make it into our spring collection. What about the others, and what modifications? Back off, Porter. Ridge, I've been working on these for months. Have you talked to Margot? Why would I want to do that? Because she researches trends? I'm not interested in trends. Obviously not. Your designs are all two or more inches above the knee. That's my style. Yes, well, it was a lot of people's style last year. Well, women are still wearing minis. Of course they are, but they're also wearing longer, more feminine designs. I don't see anything approaching that here. I like my women provocative. Yes, well, that's fine, but this business has nothing to do with how you, like your woman, want you to redesign some of these sketches. Okay. All right. I'll give you some length. You're close, Clark. Only a year or so off. Next time, Let's sketch for the woman of 1989. And one more thing. Properly designed, the longer dresses can be just as sensuous. Is that a steam bath going by? That guy doesn't learn very easily. Close, Clark. Only a year or so off. Ouch. <laughs> What's up, little brother? Came to make you a bet. Another bet. Let me guess. It involves Logan. Right you are. 50 bucks says you can't get her to move in with you tonight. Oh, hello, Maria. Welcome home. Yes, home. It's good to be back. Is Mrs. Forrester here? No, she isn't. She's not? Uh, I think she left early this morning. Hmm. I wonder where she is. Not that I'm complaining. Jake, I want to ask you a question. Shoot. How do you feel about bending some rules? Bending or breaking? Stephanie Forrester's lying through her teeth. She didn't shoot her son. I'd bet my pension on that. So? So, I want to put some heat on her. What kind of heat? She's got us, Jake. We can't get near her. But we can take her seriously. What do you have in mind? She tells us she shot her son? Okay. Let's treat her like she shot her son. A lockup. You know a woman like that has no idea what goes on inside. You know Ruth Bloom? Well, she's the matron on duty in the lockup. Yeah, I know. She's an old friend of mine. Little odd. A street smart. Would she have access to the laundry room? She has access to everything. Why don't you have her come up with a pair of coveralls? You know, the kind of prisoners in the county jail wear? Mrs. Forrester's size? Yeah. I'll pick out the color myself. Anything else? We play this strictly by the book. You want Mrs. Forrester in a holding cell? Yeah, along with all the other prisoners. Done. Jake. I want you to keep an eye on her. I want the lady educated, not molested. What about the paperwork? Well, I'll get to that in the morning. She won't get bond until she's charged. Well, then she'll probably have to spend the night here. That may just be what she needs. She insists on going through hell for her son? Well, then we'll show her what hell can be like. Excuse me. Do you have any idea how long I'm going to be here? I don't know, ma'am. 
Well, do you think that you might find out for me, please? I, I have plans this evening. I have got to get out of this place. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'll make it an even hundred bones. You don't want to do that. <laughs> Are we that sure of ourselves? Logan has already agreed. She did? How did that happen? She played me like a violin. Ridge, it's what's known as falling in love. Is it? Well, that's what it looks like to me. Well, I'll admit one thing. The lady knows how to get to me. Logan does know how to get to me. Jake said you wanted to see me? Uh, Ruth, come in, please. Close the door. You... You have Stephanie Forrester downstairs. Yes, sir. I was just about to process her. Is that the Mrs. Forrester? Uh, yes, but she doesn't get any special treatment. Do you understand? Yes, sir. You don't have to worry about that. In fact, it, it wouldn't bother me a bit if you took your time processing her, if you get my drift. Oh, well, I have tons of work to finish. I mean, I may not get to her for a while yet. Good. Another thing. Why don't you see if you can put her into a pair of those county jail coveralls? No problem. I guess you will be out of the station for a while. You know, I'll be out for some time. Well, I guess we'll do the best we can without you. One other thing. Obviously, I want the lady to get a taste of jail, but I also want you to keep your ears open. Anything in particular? I want to know if she says anything about being innocent, anything at all. <laughs> they always do. Not this one. She is innocent, but she wants us to think she's guilty. Thank you. I will be in touch. Are you waiting for someone? No. Just here to pick up your things? That won't be necessary. It won't? No. I'm moving back in tonight. Really? Yeah, Ridge and I work things out. Interesting. I thought that you were holding out for something more definite from Ridge. Well, yes, I was. But not anymore. No, not anymore. Then do I assume that you've lowered your standards again? Oh, I didn't have to do that. I wouldn't have. What does that mean? Ridge gave me what I wanted. Now, I have to ask you for something. What? A chance? chance to be a friend. <laughs> it's really something that we would both have to want, Brooke. And you don't. I know, but 
I promise you, you will someday. Why do you say that? Because, basically, I'm a good person, Caroline. And if you just let me into your life and into your heart, I'm sure that you'll like me again. Maybe we'll even be best friends someday. Well, that sounds really good, Brooke. But then you always were really good with words. You don't trust me. No, I certainly don't. Those old wounds of yours haven't healed, have they? Some wounds are inflicted so deeply that they are fatal to a relationship. Tell me, Brooke, uh, why did you change your mind about moving back in? Just what did Ridge agree to? Your dress and your purse go in this bag. Your watch, your jewelry, or any other valuable, including your money and your credit card, go in the envelope. When it is done, we'll do an inventory, and then we will see the envelope. Excuse me, uh, why are you telling me this? Because I was told to. We do this with certain prisoners. Prisoners? Oh, well, there's some mistake. I'm going to be out of here in bail in an hour or so. We'll see. We'll see? What does that mean? I'm entitled to bail. Well, I'm not saying that you are. Then why would we go through all of this? Because there is a lot of processing to do. Processing? Mm-hmm. You have to be fingerprinted, photographed. We haven't even started with the paperwork yet. And as long as this is not done, you're not going anywhere, lady. Oh, you'll be required to wear these. Ridge told me something I wanted to hear. Which was? That he loves me. He said that to you? Yes, he did. For the first time? For the first time. Well, you know, Brooke, some men will say those words to women to get what they want. And you think that's what Ridge is doing to me? Is that a question? Caroline, you know Ridge probably just as well as I do. Ridge doesn't say those three words just to anyone. In fact, I think I know who the other person is that he probably said them to. Is that supposed to hurt me? Definitely not. Did it? No, it didn't. I think you and I would get along a lot better if we tried being honest with one another. I think that's a splendid idea. Tell me, Brooke, honestly, why do you want to move back in here again? Is it really for Ridge or for everything that he can give you? It is because I love Ridge just as much as he loves me. Well, that much. And now I have to ask you a question. And I, too, want that answered honestly. Why do you hate me so much? Hate is a very strong word. And that is what I feel from you. Something very strong. It's worse than dislike. Stronger than contempt. Antipathy, acrimony, call it what you want. Are you trying to tell me these feelings aren't valid? Please do, because I would love to hear that. But they are valid, Caroline. Terribly valid. You hate me. And I think I know the reason why. Logan. I told her I loved her. You did? Not like me, huh? She really does know how to get to you. Yeah, pretty scary. Well, it doesn't have to be. The voice of experience. Well, I think it's been a little easier for me. Thorne, how many women have you said those words to? Truthfully? Yes. Only one. You're kidding. Must be a forced trait. You fall a lot easier than I do. 
Well, but I'm not too quick to sell the whole farm. It's Caroline, right? Well, who else? What about you? How many times have you said those nasty words? Uh, let's not get into that. <laughs> oh, come on, Mr. Mr. Cold-Hearted, who's left them falling by the wayside since fifth grade. Mr. Love them and leave them. How many times have you said those nasty words? More times than me? Come on, how many times? A dozen? More? Twice. Twice? Yeah, right. That's it. Two times. Anyway, Logan's moving in, and all's right with the world, I suppose. It was Caroline, wasn't it? Well, you only said those words to two women. One was Brooke, the other would have to be Caroline. But hey, you almost married her. I, I would hope that you at least told her you loved her. Yeah. It was Caroline. Well, don't sound so bummed out. Could have been a lot worse. <laughs> what a swell couple of lovers we are, <laughs> huh? Between the two of us, we've only said those three big words to two women. You keep quiet about that. That could cause a scandal. Well, what do you say we get out of here? Hunt up the girls and throw some steaks on the grill. We could ask uh, Mother and Dad to join us. Well, if you can find them. Mother's doing her disappearing act again. Just a moment. What is it, Mrs. Forrester? Where is Lieutenant Burke? I want to see him. He's gone. Gone where? Home, I guess. Home? What about me? What about you? When is he coming back? I don't know that he is. Well, then who's going to do this supposed paperwork if he doesn't? One of the other detectives, I guess. All I know is it's not my job. Just a moment. Am I not entitled to make a phone call? Sure. Then I would like to make that phone call right now. Well, as soon as your clothes and valuables are taken care of. Excuse me, I don't think you understood me. I want to make that phone call now. It won't do you any good to get an attitude, lady. I was told to get you ready for an overnight stay. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Someone has told you to get me ready for an overnight stay? Yes, ma'am. Who might that person be, Lieutenant Burke? That doesn't matter. Excuse me, isn't this just a little bit unusual? Incarcerating someone without bail? It happens. When? When a person doesn't have money for bail. Or when bail is not permitted. Or when an arresting officer is trying to put pressure on a suspect that he might have in jail. Is that the case? Excuse me. No, excuse me, please. I have a legal right to make a telephone call. I want to make that call now. If you don't take me to a telephone, I will raise such hell here that it will be heard all the way to Sacramento and back. Do you understand me? I'll be back in a few minutes to supervise you getting into those clothes. because of Ridge. That's why you hate me. It's because of a letter. No, Caroline. That letter's the biggest cop-out you've ever used. Cop-out? How can you call that a cop-out? <gasps> because it is. OK, maybe I made a mistake, but that was a year ago. And damn it, I have paid plenty for that. A mistake? Brooke, what you did was much more than a mistake. It was hateful, and it was conniving, and deceitful, and the results you know were brutal. You know why you're using this as an excuse? It's because you cannot face up to the truth. And the truth is, 
that you hate me because I love Ridge. That is the reason why, isn't it? Admit it. All right. I'll admit it. You don't deserve Ridge. Then who does? Who does deserve Ridge? Ruth, we're ready now. Okay, let's go, Daddy. Go where? To the lockup. What's the lockup? Where we keep prisoners. <laughs> 